how to start animating the ball. When we animate the ball, we need to take into consideration six possible cases. First case, when the ball hits the right edge of the stage. Second case, when it hits the left edge of the stage. The third is when it hits the CPU pad. Fourth, when it hits the player pad. Fifth is when it hits the or the box lower edge here. This is where the player has scored uh, a point. And last but not least, when it hits the lower edge of the stage, which is when the CPU has scored a point. So let's get right to it. The function that animates the ball is called uh, start ball animation. So let's create the function private function start ball animation has an event variable of a timer event colon void here we need to take into consideration the six possible cases by using if statements if ball dot x is greater than stage dot stage width minus ball dot width over two. We've done a similar thing before. This takes into consideration the stage width minus half the width of the ball. Then what we want to do is to reverse the motion of the ball. So when it hits the right edge of the stage, if it's going that way, it hits the right edge. We want to reverse its motion along the X axis while the Y speed remains the same. So in this case, we need to define two variables, one that sets the speed of the ball along the x direction and one that sets the speed of the ball along the y direction. So let's go back to our variables here and create a private variable. We'll call it ball x speed going to be, going to be of type number. We'll set it equal to 2 and again, private variable ball y speed shift type number equal to 5. Okay, back to our ball animation function. So if the ball hits the right of the edge of the stage, we want to reverse its motion. But first, we need to make it animate. So ball dot x plus equals ball x speed speed. Okay, and this is plus equals equals ball dot y plus equals ball y. Spaces here. Okay, good. If it hits the right edge of the stage, we want to reverse its motion along the x direction. We can do that by changing the value of the x speed from positive to negative. So ball x speed times equals minus one and again we want to reset the x position of the ball so that there won't be any uh, any bugs or any defaults in the game so ball dot x will be equal to this Now the same for the left edge of the stage. If 
ball dot x is less than ball dot width over two then ball x speed times equals minus one and ball dot x will be equal to ball dot width over two. Now if it hits the lower edge of the stage we can put here else because it's not going to hit the right and the left edge at the same time. So if ball dot x or dot y was greater than stage dot stage width height sorry height minus ball dot height over two then here there are a couple of things that are going to happen first we will reverse the y direction of the ball ball y speed times equals minus one we'll reset the y position of the ball okay um, ball dot y equals this copy paste and we will add the score of the CPU okay to do that we first need to define variables one for the CPU score and one for the player score so private variable CPU score number equal to zero and private variable player score just type number equal to zero so when it hits the lower edge of the stage we need to add one to the CPU score CP u score plus plus and we want to set this the text field here equal to this score okay score board dot cpu score dot text equal to string cpu score okay now the same for the uh, upper edge that is when the ball hits this box right here the scoreboard so else if ball dot y is less than um, scoreboard dot height minus ball dot ball width over two then same thing that happened here ball y speed dot or star equals minus one and ball dot y 
will be equal to this. And player score plus plus. And finally, score board dot player score dot text will be equal to string. layer score now if the ball hits the player pad or the CPU pad so if ball dot hit test object and I believe we've named the CPU pad CPU and the player pad player okay so if it hits the CPU, then ball or as we realized when we were playing the game, if the ball touches the edge of the pad, it goes faster along the X direction. And as it touches the middle of the pad, it goes slower along the X direction. This is to add a little bit more difficulty to the game and make it less predictable. So we can do that by adjusting the X speed of the ball according to where it has hit the pad at the edge or in the center or any point in between. And one thing I forgot to add here is equals true. So if it hits the CPU pad, then first we need to reverse its Y direction, ball Y speed, star equals minus one. And now to adjust its X speed, so ball X speed equals ball dot X minus CPU dot x over 6. So let's imagine what's going on here. If the ball hits exactly in the center of the CPU pad, then its x position and the CPU's x position are the same. So this turns out to be 0. So along the x position, the ball has 0 speed, so it moves only along the y direction. So if it going like this, hits the center, goes straight down. While if it hits, let's say, the extremity of the of the CPU pad, then the ball's X position is less than that of the CPU. So this turns out to be negative, and it turns out to be exactly half the width of the CPU. So in order not to make this too much big of a number, because otherwise the ball will be going all crazy. We divide the number by 6. Okay. So now let's do the same thing for the So now let's do the same thing for the player pad. Else if ball dot hit test object player equals true then ball y speed star equals minus one and same thing here copy it add a semicolon first paste it semicolon and change this and two player. Okay, and that's all it takes to animate the ball.